Hello, in this video we're going to be showing you how we set up a job on one of these Herco 425E manual spark erosion machines. Let's get started. So when you approach the machine, we're going to turn the power on. Big power switch here, turn some lights on. Now the key thing to note here is that the lights have come on. Uh, I can move the tank up and down, but I can't turn the pump on or move the head up and down. That's because I've got the e-stop in. So the e-stop kills everything but the tank actuator and the lights. So it's just something to a bit of a watch out for when you come and uh, turn the machine on. Once that's done, I'm going to turn my uh, pump on. That will start cy uh, cycling my dielectric, start circulating through the system. If you notice that when you uh, got your pump off, the dielectric is beginning to drop, it probably means your work tank bellows are, uh, are on their way out. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the control panel. So we're going to start at the top, this is our two axis DRO. Unfortunately, it doesn't save locations when you cycle the power, so we're going to have to re-zero that every time that we uh, run the machine. We've got an anator here. That's great for having a look to see what, what current you're actually pulling while you're sparking. This here is sort of an indicator to give you an idea of how you're sparking. So white light means that you're off the workpiece, green means good sparking, red means bad sparking. So again, it's there to help you out with your optimizing. We go down to here, we've got our transistors. So uh, the red light here is a verification light. That's showing you which transistors you've currently got selected. So the top rows are 0.2s, 111, and then the bottom rows are 2s. Each transistor is about 2.5 amps. So if you work by that, you're not going to go far wrong. So uh, you can use any combination of these. They don't have to be specifically in order. So that would be one transistor there, two, three, four transistors. Uh, for this video, I'm going to use six transistors, which should give me around 15 amps. Okay, next we've got our on and off times. So this is our waveform on and off times. The on time is usually set by looking in the manual uh, and looking at the transistors you have selected. That should give you an off time to start with. Sorry, the on time to start with. The off time itself, we like to keep that between one and one and a half. If you start to see like a lot of arcing or you're, you're going into deep cavities, you want to just play it safe. You can increase this up a little bit, but we always try to back it back off between one and one and a half. You've got your servo sensitivity. So that's how quick your servo is moving on the head uh, in the Z. And then the fine adjustment, uh, which if I'm honest, I don't really use. I usually set that at five, ignore it. You get enough on the uh, uh, rough adjustment that you can optimize. Again, that's used for sort of stability during cutting. Uh, we're gonna play with that a little bit later. Uh, this is the uh, servo bias, so by increasing that, what that will do is that will uh, increase the speed over the, uh, the whole cycle, so the up and down. Uh, generally we leave it in the middle, but for some niche operations it's quite useful. So for example, if you're going into a deep cavity, you may want to use that sort of uh, sped up movement as a uh, sort of suction effect to remove some of that debris. And for the same purpose, if you've got a large electrode, you want to try to keep away from that suction so you can bias it down. So general use, you keep it in the middle, but it's there if you need it. If you start seeing that, uh, you know, like I said, deep cavities, large electrodes, you've got the options there. Uh, we've already spoke uh, about the pump on and off, but we've also got the sparking on and off. Uh, the lot, when you turn the spark on, you'll see the lights come on for what transistors you're using. So uh, it's something to be aware of. That's a really good indicator of uh, whether your sparking's on. So if you approach a machine and all these transistors are lit up, uh, you don't want to go anywhere near the head or the workpiece or put your hands in the tank. You don't want to be touching it because you could get a belt off the, uh, uh, off the spark, essentially. Even if the spark is up in the head, in the air, it could have the headlock on and be sparking away. That <laughs> clearly doesn't make it safe. So we want to try and avoid, uh, if the, this light's on green and the transistors are lit up, we want to try and keep our hands away from that end. This is your head movement up and down. Now you've got, if you move it a little bit, go slow, and then if you move it quickly, it beeps at you. It beeps at you to say that you could damage your electro by putting it into your workpiece. So if you hear the beep, just be aware. Next here we've got here is this is the sort of pecking adjustment. So while you've got your on and off for your waveform, think of this as sort of like your on time of your work time. So how long you're down in the job and how far you attract out of the job to allow that flushing to clear the debris. Generally, I, I sort of leave these where they are and then when, once I'm running, I'm gonna adjust those to just optimize to what I need. 
the off time, I usually am looking for about a half a mil lift, and then the on time is what you push to get your cycle times down. Uh, effectively, by increasing that work time down, up to the amount of your flushing. So if you've got really good flushing, you can have it working for a long time uh, without having any arcing or any issues with your uh, sparking. Go through the buttons here. We've got a uh, headlock. Now, if I turn that off, it's going to retract because my spark, spark's not on. Turn that back off. Uh, again, that's just going to hold it wherever it is. Even during sparking, you can put your headlock on and lock it away. Next is my edge fine circuit. If I put that on and now I uh, contact the, work, the electrode to the workpiece, it's going to beep and it's going to give me a red light up here. This is my endpoint button. It was flashing at me. What that's going to do is when the uh, Z reaches depth, it's going to stay there. So rather than turn the spark off and retracting, it's going to stay at depth and it's going to keep that uh, waveform and the pecking, it's going to keep pulsing, uh, even though it's not sparking anything and it's reached depth. It won't go any further. This is great if you're chasing that depth. So you can leave it at depth, go, retract it up, check with your, uh, your depth mic. Okay, I need to put a bit more on, put it back down, and then you've got your time to just slowly reduce your micrometer. Uh, sorry, lift your micrometer so the head goes down further. It's also great for if you're using an Orbi cut because you can use it and then still get your pecking, still get your flushing, and all of your other functions, even when you're orbiting out with your Orbi cut. Uh, this is your, effectively, this is engaging this circuit. So if you deselect that, you're just going to do a straight burn. Uh, so you're, again, you're still pulsing when you're on and off time, but you're not going to be lifting off the job to allow that debris to retreat. If you're just burning a tap out or something that you don't really care if it arcs out a little bit, you can leave it off. Or if you're just putting a really shallow impression and you've got good flushing, you may not need that pecking. But generally speaking, we leave it off. Next is your high voltage circuit. So if you're working with less than one transistor, it's suggested to put the high voltage circuit on. So that takes you from 100 volts to 200 volts. Now, with the uh, high voltage circuit, it actually won't work with the whole generator. It will only work with the uh, lower power. So I think the lower uh, four transistors. Uh, something to be aware of. So when you're running really low uh, power, the, you need that extra voltage just to sort of engage the spark. Finally, we've got your unattended switch. What that does is when you reach your uh, depth, uh, when you reach your limit switch, it's going to retract, sorry, it's going to turn the spark off, turn the pump off, and retract all the way up in the set. Something to be aware of, if you've got your endpoint on, this button will do nothing. It will just, because your endpoint supersedes it. So, good, good point about that, if you're unattended, you're walking away, you want it to stop, you want it to sort of idle, all that you have on is then the, uh, the, the, the fans and the lights. So otherwise, if you didn't have that on, the head would attract, but the pump would stay on, so it would waste a bit of power for you. Cool. Last one, uh, rise and fall of the tank. It's got one speed. That doesn't work when you've got your spark engaged. So again, something else to watch out for. So next thing we're going to do is set our zeros. So I'm going to drive this over off the workpiece and then uh, bring the head down. So I'm going to put my edge fine circuit on and bring it into the edge of the workpiece. So what I'm going to do, I've got my buzzer on, I'm going to listen out for that. If it was in a loud environment, I could also look for this red light on here. So I've got a good connection on that. So I'm going to zero my Y and take it off. It's quite important that you uh, clean your job down, take your dielectric off it prior to you touching on, because that could really impact your um, uh, where your zero lands. On this piece, I'm not too bothered because it's a bit of scrap, but if you really do some accurate work, it's worth cleaning it down prior to touching on. So, touch on on the X. Oh, a nice solid beat. And then zero max. Now I'm going to drive it up, take it to uh, 25, 25, roughly. Right, 25 minus 25. Right. Cool. So we've set our axes. I'm above my first spark location, now we're going to set our Z. So first things first, I'm going to turn off my headlock, and because I've got my edge fine circuit, it's going to slowly creep down. 
if it goes up, I'm going to adjust my service speed up a little bit. So it's not going anywhere, it's actually retracting. So I'm going to slowly increase my service sensitivity so it starts to drive down towards the job. Cool. When we're beeping on top of the job, I'm going to put the headlock on. Now you see it didn't make that, it didn't hold that beep, so I'm going to, there we go, getting a solid beep. I'm going to turn this off for the time being just because it's pretty annoying. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to set our link switch up. So I've got a slip or something to go over the top. I'm just going to slowly increase this by the middle nut, make sure I'm turning it the right way. No, I wasn't. <laughs> that was the case. So I'm just going to increase this to just flicking the light on so I know that that's nice and flush with the top of the housing. There we go. Cool. Then I'm going to bring my clock down. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, pressure onto the clock and zero. Again, I'm going to use this less to measure and more to sort of look for optimization. I'm going to set my mic to zero and then I'm going to bring it down on top of the limit switch or near as I can get it. And then I'm going to do a bit of a fine adjustment until I get that green light on. Oh, a bit too far. So now when I back this off, I can see as we get to zero, we're set. So I'm going to back this off to one mil. So that's my first cut, one mil, down in the zone. Once I'm happy I've set my zeros, I'm going to uh, turn my edge find off. I'm going to turn my headlock off just to bring it above or off the job. You need to take it off the job, otherwise you won't be able to get that spike down. I'm going to bring my work tank up to about 30 mil above the job. And as you can see, this electrode's got through flushing. So uh, I'm just going to turn a little bit of uh, flushing on, only a touch at this stage when we, before we get stuck sparking. So I'm happy at the minute I've got my, the correct on time selected, my server sensitivity is nice and slow. I haven't touched these yet, but I'll get into that optimization in a minute. Off time is I'm going to increase that just a little bit to give myself a bit of chance of start starting, and then uh, when I'm happy with this, I'm going to turn my spark on. Once the spark's on, you can see it doesn't go anywhere because I put my headlock on. Again, last chance to check I've got the right transistor selected and turn my headlock off. We're going to get a little bit more into optimization in the in the future, but I'm going to turn, make sure my packing's turned on. So then you can see that it will start to uh, pulse. And for me, I want it to be going up about half a mil. So my off time is a little bit, a little bit high. Again, I want that clock going around about halfway. Half a mil for me. I'm going to now back my off time to where I want it. I'm now getting the 12 amps that I was expecting. But just not flushing. Not too much. And I'm happy with it sparking now. I'm getting a solid green light as it's uh, sparking away. My, I'm not jumping too much on the clock up here. If I was, I could just reduce my survey sensitivity a little bit. Uh, if I increase it, I can, over, I can show you it will begin to bounce effectively. So I want to just reduce that down. There we go, nice smooth uh, clock motion. Stable cutting. I can see the sparks are going nicely. With that, I'm happy. Now, if at any point I want to inspect my job, it's really easy with these rising four tanks. So I'm going to wait for my head to back off, take it off the job. Headlock on, spark off. I'm going to bring my tank down. I'm going to bring my uh, head up. Have a look at my job. Yep, yeah, happy with that. I'm bring my head back down. Spark, uh, sorry, tank back up. And spark back on. Carry on sparking. So it's really good for those rapids. You don't have to wait for the tank to drain out or do any of that. So that's really one of the advantages of these rising for the tanks.
thanks for watching. If you'd like any more info on training, spares, consumables, please get in touch with us. We offer a wide range of EDM products and can support you uh, on whatever your business needs are.